Show me. This place is turning into a zoo. Well, he says he's a caged lion waiting to be uncaged. And that's what happens before he takes the ring. He is brought in by a group of guys in a cage with an actual lion's belt from a lion that was killed in Africa on his body. Hey, what do you expect from a guy who calls Vegas home, right? Right. Born in Uganda, Bogare began drawing attention for coming into the ring like this in a cage and wearing a lion's head and skin draped over his body. But it's been his work between the ropes that's actually kept people talking. A five-time African amateur champion, Bogare came into the U.S. and turned pro back in 2008. And he's displayed an aggressive style and punishing left hook ever since. He took a huge leap up in opposition in his last fight in May right here on Showbox. Facing Ray Beltran, Manny Pacquiao's chief sparring partner. It was a grueling, physical fight. Beltran applied constant pressure throughout. Both got as good as they gave and about plagued by headbutts, leaving both battered and bloody. In the end, though, Bogare would successfully navigate the 10-round distance for the first time and earn a very close but unanimous decision and, more importantly, invaluable experience. Sharif Bogare turns 23 tomorrow and would love nothing more than to celebrate early by keeping his record unblemished. He currently stands at 20-0 with 12 KO. Let's go behind the numbers, Steve. Well, Kurt, a monstrous step. Bogare's showbox win over Beltran was huge. He faced his toughest opponent to date. He overcame a bad cut. He gutted out a win, and he went 10 rounds for the first time. Early power. Bogare's history suggests that if he doesn't overwhelm you early, he's probably not going to get you late. 10 of his 12 stoppage wins have come in the first two rounds. And facing vets, Bogare is a young lion, but his prey has been very experienced. His five most recent opponents averaged 37 fights. Two good young prospects, both undefeated. It is fight time here on Showtime. Let the showbox begin. 20-0 Sharif Bogare and 16-0 Francisco Contreras in our main event. A lightweight matchup scheduled for 10 rounds from Las Vegas. Once again, our ring announcer, Jake Gutierrez. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to you from the Texas Station Gambling Hall and Hotel here in Las Vegas, Nevada, where tonight's action is presented to you by Golden Boy Promotions in association with Tecate Cerveza con Caracter. AT&T, get it faster with 4G, rethink possible. Texas Station. Time. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Bill Brady. Commissioners are Francisco Aguilar, Skip Avancino, T.J. Day, and Pat Lundball, and the executive director is Keith Kaiser. Our physicians at ringside. The lead is Dr. Al Capanna, and assisted by Dr. Anthony Ruggirola and Dr. James Game. Our timekeepers will be Steve Esposito and Ernie Howdegui. The three judges scoring this bout will be Adelaide Bird, Dick Howe, and Ricardo Ocasio. And the man in charge, referee Jay Nady. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Texas Station Gambling Hall and Hotel, right here in exciting Las Vegas, Nevada, it's time for the leather to fly. This is the Showbox main event of the evening. 10 rounds of boxing for the NABO Lightweight Championship. Introducing first, he'll be fighting out of the blue corner. He entered the ring wearing white trimmed in black, and he weighed in at 135 pounds. His professional record, he is unbeaten with 16 victories, 13 big wins by knockout. Originally from La Romana, Dominican Republic, he now fights out of Irvington, New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger and undefeated Francisco Contreras. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the jungle print trunks and he weighed in at 135 pounds. He has a perfect professional record consisting of 20 victories, no losses, including 12 wins by a knockout. Originally from Kampala, Uganda, he now lives in fights out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the undefeated, current and defending NABO 
lightweight champion, Sharif the Lion Bulgari. Is that woman in the ring with Bogaray having a good hair day or a bad hair day? I'm not sure, but the thinking going in is that this is a typical tall fighter, short fighter matchup. But you see, Contreras' reach advantage is only an inch. Still, look for Bogaray to apply pressure and try to get close. The rules, same as first fight, no standing in, no three knockdown. Only the ref, Jay Nady, can stop the fight. Can't be saved by the bell in any round. And the accident, the foul rule, should the fight end because of a foul before four, no decision. After that, we go to the cards. It was a long time ago when Contreras took the ring. We'll see how his body's doing. He had to stand there through that long ring walk of Bogare. And now, finally ready for round one. And we talked to him about having to do that, and his trainer, Valentin Conter uh, Contreras, no relation, says that he showed him the tape so that he would be mentally prepared to not lose focus between the time he took the ring and the time Bogare took the ring. In terms of amateur experience, Bogare, an African champ, fought in the World Championships in 07, impressive. Contreras, however, six wins over the Olympic gold medalist Felix Diaz from the DR. And pro experience, you see that Bogare, 71 rounds to only 46 con to Contreras. Contreras has a lot of early knockouts. Yeah, both these guys like to get busy early. You can see Contreras, the taller fighter, he's got 10 of his 13 rock knockouts have come in the first two rounds, so obviously he's aggressive early. And I would say Bogaray is aggressive early, but he's really aggressive throughout the entire fight. You've seen it already on display. Likes to keep busy. Well, here's a young fighter in Bogaray that has a, a big following already. You know, his handlers has all the confidence in the world in this guy. They feel like that last fight was just an off night. That's why they have the confidence to put him in there with a guy like Contreras because they feel confident that he's going to get the job done and he's going to get it done in fashion. Well, you can see he doesn't mind getting in close with the taller fighter. Trying to keep that distance short. And that would usually be the strategy, but Bogaray's trainer, Kenny Adams, told us he thinks that Contreras really gives you that anyway. Gives away his height advantage. Lets you fight close because he likes to fight close. We'll see if that pans out. Yeah, I don't agree with that. I, I think Contreras, in the fights I've seen him, he likes distance and he likes to throw straight punches. He's a long arm fighter. The height difference between these two is really pronounced. Yeah, almost four inches, and it looks <laughs> to be even more than that. And I agree with Steve. Uh, right now, he's fighting beautifully. He's fighting tall, and uh, you know, he's not giving uh, Bulgari the opportunity to counter punch right now. So he's controlling the first and the early round right now. You see Bulgari missed with a couple of big punches. And that right hand that he's winging, he's done that twice. That does not look good for a fighter that's trying to be a contender. You just don't throw overhand rights like that. No power Stop. and just winging it. Stop! Let go! Jay Nady breaking him up. And one punch to look for from Contreras. As Bogare gets close, Contreras does have a good left hook to the body. We've seen it once so far. Look for it again. Bogare trying to stay in close. Stop! Stop! Lady warning him. We're holding! If there are too many more collisions like the one we just saw, we're going to see blood again, which Stop. we saw in the, in the first uh, Bulgari fight on Showbox. All right, Sweet. What you doing? You're throwing a jab and you're leaning back. Throw the jab and drive the right hand right through and go right to the target. You understand what I'm saying? You with me on that? You understand what I'm saying? I want you to jab, 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 step to it, drive the right hand back with the hook. Quick hook. Okay. 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 No te falles mucho, que vamos a esperar, vamos a hablar un poco más. Don't go too strong. Move, move around, move around. You, you see what you have. So, one by one, every round, one by one. Be sure what you do. Okay, go up, go up. Give me some message. Samson Leck was not your normal interpreter there. <laughs> no. Advisor to Sergio Martinez, one of the best three or four fighters in the world. 
Well, we've got two unbeaten prospects going at it right now as we get ready for round two. Both came out aggressive in that opening round, but on my scorecard, at least, I gave it to Contreras. I did as well. I thought it was pretty close. Good left hook there by Contreras. That's the second time Contreras has landed that left hook in close. I, I gave the round to Contreras, so he's uh, down two with an entrance like that. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't seem to affect Contreras at all. His concentration was there indeed. You can see Bogare kind of lunging forward to try and keep close, to try and keep the pressure on. And Contreras is doing a good job of just kind of sidestepping a lot of that. And again, he missed with a straight right hand. He's winging it. It's just not right now getting there. He needs to step up a little bit, double jab to reach in. Yeah, it was a good combination delivered by Bogare. And now tries to bring the heat again, and he gets caught up. That's what Bogare needs to do. He's capable of throwing 100 punches around, and he wants to try to overwhelm Contreras, take Contreras out of that smooth boxing mode. And we have seen Bogare fight here on Showbox before. He does not tire. He can throw 100 punches around and still be going in the tent. And you just saw something Kenny Adams didn't like. Bogare throwing that right hand, real looping, real circular and wide, and he wants him throwing that straight. Two brawling now, and Bonare getting the best of it. For a second, Contreras answering back. And again, their heads are very are coming very close to clashing, so let's keep an eye on that. And it looks like uh, Bulgari is the one that's, uh, you know, making that head come close like that because he's out of out of control when he's throwing those punches. Well, and that's what we saw in his last fight here on Showbox. Cut above both eyes, but Ray Beltran, his opponent, was cut as well due to a number of head clashes. Bogare now up against the ropes, but still fighting. He doesn't slow down Stop. at all. Stop. This looks like it has the potential to get a little nasty on the inside. The, uh, both fighters are fighting a, a fast pace, and I uh, noticed that in the fighters meeting, Contreras looked a little drawn to me. I don't know Stop. if you know he's struggled with weight but he didn't look really fresh. So I'm, I'm trying to see, can he keep this, this pace up if this round, if the fights go five, six, seven rounds? Yeah, he got caught with a couple of left hands while he was in the grasp of Bogare. And this time gets thrown into the ropes by Bogare. And now comes out fighting with the body punches. You're right, this may turn nasty at some point. Yeah, and I think Bogare's been very successful this round in making Contreras very uncomfortable. Oh, he catches him again with a couple of left hands at the end of the round while he was holding him around the head. 